So I'm a firm believer if you have the ability to live alone at some point in your life, you should do it. I know that there's a certain financial aspect to it and not everyone can achieve that, especially in this day and age, but I think the experience of this could be super beneficial to anyone. So you want to live alone, but you're scared. Totally valid. It's hard to be alone almost all of the time. Like, how are you going to spend that time? How are you going to decorate your space? How does life look when you are all by yourself? I have lived alone at many times in my adult life, and while I am no expert, I do feel like I've got a few things figured out. Today, I'm going to impart some of this knowledge onto you so that you can have an easier transition into this new chapter of your life. It's interesting, like when I tell people that I live alone, they transition between, oh, you're going to love it so much and aren't you lonely? Super quickly. That's because you probably that's because they probably couldn't bear to be alone with their own thoughts for any length of time. But you, you're different. And yes, you will get lonely sometimes, but overall, you probably will love living alone. There is something so freeing knowing that you don't have to answer to anyone. That there will always be food that you like in the fridge and that no one will take it from you. That you get to cook all the yummy foods that you want to and stay up as late as you want to. And that you get to decide who comes into this sacred space of yours. So let's get into it. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and let me know in the comments below your tips and tricks for living alone. So first things first, you need a good routine. Are you an early bird or a night owl? When do you wake up? work and when do you come home. Making sure you stick to your regular routine is the first step in making sure that you have a secure and comfortable life in your new space. You need to set up the right energy. For example, when I was living in Rapid with roommates, I was staying up super late at night so that I could hang out with them, which isn't their fault, it was completely my choice. But now that I live alone, I've noticed myself getting tired at like 8 p.m. So I go to bed at around 8 p.m. And while I don't fall asleep until maybe 10, I'm using that like those two hours to read or, you know, just catch up on some YouTube stuff. I get a good night's sleep every single night and I'm ready to, I can like wake up and be ready to take on the day. To go along with that, what are your day and night routines? I would sit down and think about what is most important to you at these times. For me, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is, well, Sometimes when I wake up, Brew wants to have a little cuddle time, so we do that. But then I get out of bed and I start my morning coffee right away. And after that, I go and do my skincare routine. At night, it's picking a few things up, maybe, you know, doing my dishes so that they don't sit overnight. Doing my skincare, taking my meds, and reading. Keeping these things consistent can help you feel like really safe and secure in your own space and help build like really healthy habits for you. You know, staying up late is like super fun at first until like you can't get up in the morning for work. Also, make sure to keep a clean space. I know it sucks and it's like not fun to clean, but you deserve to live in a clean and cozy space. I myself don't, hi, I don't do big deep cleans once a week. I do choose a few things each day to focus on. So one day I'll choose to vacuum and the next day I'll pick up all my scattered crochet projects and then another day I'll clean the bathroom. And it doesn't have to be an all or nothing, which did take me a while to understand. Cleaning as you go also helps. Like, if you spill some coffee in the morning, just, like, take a rag in your all-purpose cleaner and just, like, spray down your counters. This works for me as someone who lives in, like, a small space. Uh, I know that that's not something that can work for everybody, but, you know, it's something to give a try. So we've been focusing a lot on, you know, you and your space, but, you know, you aren't... And maybe you are a homebody, but you also need to focus on your social circle. Make sure you stay in contact with your family and friends. 
I don't care if you're a homebody, you need socialization just like the rest of us. Maybe you don't need as much, but I, I suggest trying to keep up with your friends or family at least once a week. That could even mean a FaceTime call, getting coffee, or just even running errands with someone. This doesn't mean you have to go out and get plastered on the weekends. This doesn't mean you have to go and spend a bunch of money on anything. This is just something that helps keep you sane and can help remind you that the people around you do in fact love you. Because sometimes living alone, it can be easy to get into a bit of a spiral at times. To go along with that, you need to get outside. Do you live near a park or is there a sidewalk around your place that you can walk around? You need to be getting outside. I know that the term hot girl walk like has passed in the cultural zeitgeist now, but seriously, you need to go on that walk. It's great for your mental and physical health and you need to get out of the staleness of your own space. One thing that I that can also help when things get stale inside is to open your windows and let fresh air in. I almost always have a window open in my place because there isn't like central air in my apartment, but it's nice to like have air kind of circulating through so that it's not just like, I don't know, I just always think like when I have my windows closed, I'm like, ugh, it's like damp. <laughs> so next, you need a hobby. I know there's a deficit of hobbies and interests nowadays, and there's a myriad of reasons why. I know it can be expensive and time-consuming. Learning something new or, you know, picking up a skill is super good for your mental health. It gives you something to take pride in or something to talk about when you meet new people. <clears throat> and you're not doing these things for the enrichment of entertainment of others, but it's fun to talk about things that you're passionate about. So before jumping into the popular things that you see others doing right now, like the run clubs or drinking green juices, I guess, are the two things that I can think of. Think, like, what is it that you do like to do? Like, are you interested in textiles and fashion? Maybe look into, like, sewing or crochet or knitting or weaving. There's so many things to do within the fiber arts and, you know, you can find more about crochet on this channel. But do you like to read and analyze texts? Library cards are free, and even if you don't want to go to your physical library, many places now offer digital cards where you can check out audiobooks and ebooks for free. I myself use the Libby app all the time to listen to my audiobooks. Even critically engaging with your favorite TV shows, movies, and video games are hobbies. Maybe you love makeup and want to start sharing your looks online. Maybe you love to stay active and going to the gym and weightlifting is what you want to get into. The only thing I would try and steer you away from is shopping overall as a hobby. That's a slippery slope to overfilling your space with unneeded things and probably getting into a lot of credit card debt. I think we all enjoy shopping to a certain extent, but I mean the way of like shopping for things that you don't actually need. Think like a TJ Maxx or like Home Goods haul when you're like, oh my god, it's just like so cute, and then it just gets kind of put in with all your other stuff and you never think about it that way again. Also be aware that you don't need to monetize your hobbies. I know that I've done that with mine with crocheting and if you choose to do so be really careful with what boundaries you're going to set with yourself to make sure that this can stay something that you love for the long term. I always tell people that like my crocheting and like when I was making jewelry and stuff that it was a hobby first and that it's something that I love, which is why I have chosen to like keep my day job and not pursue anything full-time at this point. So, you know, just be careful with that. I know that nowadays everything's like, oh, your side hustle, your side grind, you know. You don't have to monetize your hobbies. Even if you want to start like posting about it on Instagram, you don't have to sell people anything. Just, you know, Food for thought. So I know we just talked about hobbies, but this ties in a little bit. Get into some audiobooks or podcasts or, you know, your YouTubers that you really like. It can be really quiet living alone. And while the quiet and solitude is like super nice at times, uh, I know for myself and get eerie if it's quiet for too long. I almost always have a YouTube video going in my background or an audiobook going on my speakers. Like, it's just something that fills the space and, like, brings comfort for me. <clears throat> so maybe that one's, like, a little niche, but I, you know, I find it that... Then you also, you know, when you're consuming books or, you know, with podcasts, you're probably keeping up on current events and stuff. And so it's kind of a 
double win. Next is do not worry about the aesthetics of your apartment. Some of my favorite people in my life are so good at putting together a room and I've realized I'm not one of those people. <laughs> like I'm incredibly jealous of the way that they're able to construct a room and how good it looks and I am just not one of those people. <laughs> it's okay for your apartment to just be an amalgamation of all the things in your life that you love. So put up your weird art and have mismatching blankets and stacks of books everywhere. The space is a representation of you, not a Pinterest page. Also, be super wary of who you bring into your space. I, as a single woman, um, don't want anybody here that's not my friend, like men. If you aren't allowed, essentially, I don't want people. I don't want men here. I like my friends can come and they can stay over, but this may sound like really woo woo, but like some people have bad energies associated with them. You don't want that in your space. If you are single, think long and hard about whether or not you want someone to know exactly where you live before bringing them into your space for the first time. Your friends and family as well have no right to be where you pay rent if you don't want them to be. This is your safe space, not theirs. So the next few things in this segment uh, are things that helped me immensely in particular. So just like take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Uh, I highly suggest getting a pet. Brew is one of the best things in my life. She is one of... Yeah, you. Yeah. She is one of my most rewarding experiences is getting to be her mom. It can be hard to be alone all of the time. So having a furry companion around can really help you feel a sense of purpose and help lift your spirits when you're feeling down. Really think about like your lifestyle and take that into account when you want to get a pet. Like if you aren't a very active person, like don't get a dog. They need to go on walks, you know, or, you know, if you're gone all the time. Also, probably don't get a dog or a cat or a pet if you're gone all the time. But like really take into account like your level of commitment as well. Cause I mean, an animal is a big commitment, but I do recommend, you know, if you like animals, if you know you want to like try, I highly suggest getting a pet. Journaling. This is something I've been doing my whole entire life and journaling is a great way to get to know yourself and the way that your mind works. Living alone can be super hard and it's easy to spiral into negative thoughts, especially if you struggle with anxiety and depression like I do. Journaling and writing affirmations slash like daily gratitudes have helped me stay in good spirits and also just been a good way for me to document my life. Journaling is really good too if you're trying not to like gossip about others because then you can just you know write down whatever you feel. I always say like when I open my journal nobody should read it ever ever ever. Nobody should ever read it because the things that I write in those journals are things that like I wouldn't tell anybody. Like, maybe I'm angry about something. Well, I'll write about it, and then 20 minutes later, it's fine. I'm able to truly let go of things because I wrote about it. And, you know, it, it just helps. Look for local events in your area. So I'm still new to Minneapolis, and I'm trying to meet new friends. So I've been searching on Facebook events or even Google events to see what's going on near me. Sometimes on Instagram, if you start looking for events as well, you'll start getting sponsored posts for events going on in your area. I also suggest finding small businesses in your area and following them on Instagram or Facebook because they always seem to have something going on. It's important to get out of your space sometimes. I know that it can be like so nice to just be lazy all day, every day after work, but it can, especially with living alone, it can get so isolating so fast. Like you can't do that to yourself because then you, you probably will struggle with some depression or anxiety and all this stuff. And being a part of your local community in one way or another can be really fun and a good way to meet new people. So this is not an exhaustive list by any means. There are many different ways to live alone and it really comes down to trial and error on what you like and don't like. I've been blessed with being able to live alone many times in my life and I've found what works for me to have a safe, happy, and productive life. 
try different things and have fun with this chapter of your life. I know that it's easy to fall into like, oh my god, I cannot wait to live with someone again, like a partner or, you know, your best friend. I know I've, I've done it too, but this chapter of your life is just as important as any other chapter. You have been given an opportunity to get, your no get to know yourself on a deeper level and learn to love who you are to your very core. I hope this video helped and leave your tips and tricks in the comments below, like the video and don't forget to subscribe before you go. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.